Welcome everyone to another observability clinic. Today's topic, advanced extensions with Dynatrace, the art of the possible with Dynatrace extensions. And I brought an expert who actually built a lot of extensions for Dynatrace. Mark, welcome to, uh, and thank you so much actually for doing this clinic with me. Hello, Andy. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, um, yeah I'm going to present a couple of extensions I've built for some of our customers in the past year, two years. And yeah, very happy to be presenting some of these here today. Yeah, no, thank you so much. For those people that are new to the clinics, you can see a couple of links on the bottom. There's more than this. Also on the topic of extensions, we have already done several uh, where we've been introduced by the product team on how to actually build extensions. So if you want to know more about extensions in general, check out some of the other content. Today, it's really about seeing what Mark is built. Mark, um, can you just, I know I see lead consultant, can you just give us maybe another two, three sentences about uh, your, your background uh, before we jump in? Yes, uh, happy to do that. So I've been in the past, before joining the Trace, uh, developer. Embedded systems developer and made a switch to cloud a couple of years ago and yeah went to Dynatrace and started with my consulting job and yeah very happy since then to have made that switch and I've learned really a lot uh, from everybody in this company really great experience awesome and then uh, Mark the way we do it uh, I know you have a couple of extensions prepared a lot of live demos. So I will let you run the whole thing. Maybe, you know, you can also bring me in at the end of your demo to see if there's any questions, if something is clear or unclear, then I can also chime in. But Mark, with this, please show us how you are bringing uh, new features, new capabilities to our Dynatrace customers using our extension concept. Thank you. Yeah, so... I will start uh, by saying that these extensions are built in Python. These are the uh, 1.0 extensions that we're offering at the moment. And all of these extensions can be found through um, our services teams. So they will get in touch with me and we will make sure to get you one of those. Um, I will present these four extensions you see on the screen. Um, I will go through them uh, into each of one and yeah be showing you a little bit around the configuration uh, what problems they may generate uh, what the use cases are why they were even created uh, the way they are today mm. and yeah maybe let's jump right into it mm -hmm. thank you so the first one i want to present is the uh, create management zone extensions. So we already know, or probably most of you know about uh, Monaco. This goes a little bit, or the background of this is a little bit uh, also uh, similar to Monaco, but in a way that we had uh, specific constraints and we want to continuously uh, onboard and create management zones for hosts that are being deployed where we install a one agent. So we defined a couple of rules and a couple of templates that are met depending on which host is installed with what kind of properties. And you can actually run this extension uh, via a cron string. So I will show you this. So you can run multiple in parallel and multiple active gates, one maybe every three hours, one maybe every six hours, something like that. And yeah, it will actively uh, run and without any uh, interaction, you just... Uh, let it sit there on ActiveGate and it will create the management zones for you. So maybe I will just jump right into this one. Mm -hmm. So this will be this extension, create management zone extensions. The templates are at the moment hard coded in the extension, but can be extended uh, via simple JSON file, similar to the templates we see also for Monaco. This uh, extension will uh, receive the URL, so to where this is actually going. In this case, it's just my sprint tenant. Uh, DT tokens or Dynatrace token uh, that will need to have some write permissions for configuration and read permission for entities. And yeah, the cron string, as I mentioned. So at the moment, this is running every minute, mm -hmm. um, but this is using uh, the cron string uh, Python module. So you can just here write any kind of, of cron string you want. So as I said, you can run it maybe, makes more sense to run it maybe once a day or once a week, uh, depending on the amount of, of hosts you are deploying or onboarding during the day or during the week. And you also like um, 
to have some custom properties for the device. Um, maybe some customers would like to already give them some specific uh, metadata so you can write them uh, in a YAML-like uh, array and these properties will appear then under the device. So jumping into this specific uh, custom device, this would be the specific mm -hmm. custom device. All of my extensions are in this my extension group. And here we have the custom device. At the moment, the management zone counter is zero since there are no management zones to be created. Um, for this purpose, I actually have one management zone that needs, should be created uh, in a matter of, of minutes. Um, I will remove the management zone that I have for this demo. And it's actually called Super Anwendung Demo. Mm -hmm. I will remove this management zone and we will see that in the next couple of minutes, this management zone will appear and the counter will uh, just jump one up. Um, this extension does also check for specific properties of hosts. So if a host does not have the necessary properties to for the template to be filled out, it will generate a problem and we will see it on this page and you can get notified so that maybe the deployment process had an error the deployment process couldn't get necessary properties from the database or from the cmdb that it's fetching all the properties for the host and the extension will automatically notify whoever uh, is in charge of, of the deployment process so, so mark if i understand this correctly this feels almost like an operator in the kubernetes world where you have an operator that is basically you know, having a reconciliation loop, it's constantly scanning your desired state, and then it's always ensuring that your desired state is there. In your case, mm -hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong, your extension is constantly scanning your Dynatrace monitored environment. And if it sees, let's say, a host that is not assigned to a management zone or whatever kind of rules you specify, it will then make sure that the Dynatrace configuration is correctly set up. And in your case, this is, you know, it's creating a management zone, for instance. Oh, yeah, here we go. That's it. Wow. That's it. Correct. That's really cool. And since it's running every minute, um, yeah, we will have here this uh, graph that says, okay, our management zone was created. Everything is fine. So it sends just a custom info event with the name of the management zone, mm -hmm. what, what kind of maybe management zone it is, mm -hmm. or uh, what impact level it has in, in this case. Uh, we have a little bit more of a description, and we could add a lot of more properties if we wanted to. And if we switch back to the management zone settings screen, uh, we have to make a refresh. And here we mm -hmm. see the unrandom uh, was created again. These all um, rules are from the template, extracted from the template. Uh, they're based on specific tags we want to have. And in this case, uh, these are specific tags uh, that we agreed on with a customer. Mm -hmm. So this is what we will be getting. Uh, we can extend this, we can reduce this however we like, and we can, somebody can come here, delete it, and the extension will come again in the next couple of minutes and recreate it. So we ensure really that the state is how we like it. And, and yeah, basically the extension will be there uh, when we maybe mess up or we accidentally delete something we shouldn't be deleting. It's a really cool use case. So uh, really monitoring and observing if your Dynatrace configuration is correct based on rules. So instead of, uh, you know, you having, because there's two approaches, as you mentioned, we have our API, we have uh, tools like Monaco monitoring as code that we typically say as part of your deployment pipeline or as mm -hmm. part of your change process, you are basically configuring these things in Dynatrace. In your case, you're doing a different approach. You have a, an extension that every minute basically validates is your Dynatrace configuration uh, as it should be based on the live data that you have in Dynatrace, based on the mon yeah, metadata. That's really cool. Yes, yes, that's it, exactly. So we ensure that the state remains the same. And when new ones come in, they will also either be added to the management zone automatically due to the tags mm -hmm. in this case, or uh, the management zone will be created for this new host. Awesome. Okay, so 
up for the second one. This second one um, was also created due to some um, limitations of the self-monitoring that uh, we we see uh, for the SAS environment. So this um, extension will get the configurations uh, for specific um, endpoints we have in Dynatrace. So in this case, for example, alerting profiles, we look at dashboards, key requests, maintenance windows, metric events, uh, notifications. Um, yeah, and it will check for the soft limits. We have actually uh, out of the box configured in Dynatrace. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can actually change the soft limits to yeah, whatever uh, we need to. And there are some hard limits, of course, so we can't really like uh, put um, yeah numbers like one million uh, auto tax, depending on the class of size. Maybe yes, but uh, or even if it makes sense. Um, but yeah, this is extension will automatically get the soft limits that are set for your environment out of the box, and will check if you are maybe getting to a specific threshold. You are reaching maybe too many dashboards, maybe too many auto tags, and before that happens, so before you maybe are at the point where you wanted to create a new tagging rule, and you can't because of some uh, limitation. And this extension will have warned you way before that. And this, uh, you will also see that you can set this specific threshold um, to a percentage of the consumption of, of this specific um, configuration. So yeah, for example, the out of the box value I chose was 80%. So once we reach 80% of uh, all the maintenance windows we, we can create, then a problem will be triggered. And yeah, we will actually have a look at that. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the settings. And here under the extensions, we find the environment alerts extension. And the way I chose to go with this extension is pretty similar to what I did for the extension before. And um, this gets a URL for Dynatrace, for your Dynatrace environment and Dynatrace token that we'll um, need to be able to check for all of these uh, settings. So it does check for settings 2.0 and uh, the whole schemas and objects, and it does check for the configuration we want as well. Mm -hmm. um, we can select which kind of debug level we want. So this will be then locked into our extension log files on the active gate. Uh, at the moment I have a debug, but you can choose from any of these. Um, maybe you don't want to have too many um, outputs then info is just fine again the cron string so how often does this extension run again maybe it does make sense to leave this extension running maybe a couple of hours or maybe once a day or two times a day probably since uh, maybe at the beginning you will start with a lot of uh, configuration but then as time goes on maybe you don't do as much so maybe having it run a little bit less than every minute uh, is pretty sensible mm -hmm. Again, you can define properties for your extension or your extension custom device uh, that will appear in the custom metadata. And here we have the threshold that I was talking about. So this is the a percentage that will be looked at. Um, it will compare the actual consumption of your, for, for example, alerting profiles against this threshold. And if this threshold is um, broken, then you will get a problem on your custom device and on your environment. So these are at the moment the configurations I've set up to look at. These are the default soft limits configured out of the box for each environment. Um, you can adapt this to whatever um, limit you have set. Uh, they have a hard limit, but in between the soft limit and this hard limit, you can set a number, um, whatever you have configured for your own environment. Um, this extension can be uh, um, extended with uh, the new endpoints or new settings, objects, um, however you like. Mm -hmm. So feel free uh, once you get your hands on to extend it. I have tried to make this API, so to say, uh, in Python pretty straightforward so that it gets a specific uh, payload and it will upload the consumption data to your environment. Mm -hmm.
especially with the uh, API v2s now that we have read most APIs always return like a total count because basically what your extension does here is like it queries the API how many dashboards do you have how many alerting profiles and I really like the idea by the way it's it's a really it's very simple yet very powerful and I know with the threshold you put it to one I think you did this uh, to just show what it uh, how it then looks like when an error comes in because obviously one percent is, is a very low number I would assume typically you would do something like 60 70 percent so if you reach a certain Correct. let's say limit of 70 80 percent you want to get mm -hmm. alert yeah but that's that's really really cool really amazing yeah, so just for this uh, demonstration, I have put it at 1% so that we see the actual error mm -hmm. in Dynatrace. And yeah, we have something something mm -hmm. to, to see. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so let's jump into the actual custom device for this extension. So this is the Environment Alerts extension mm -hmm. that is showing a couple of problems already. So here we can see that uh, this extension is also showing the consumption. Mm -hmm. Or in this case, the um, yeah the amount of key requests we are consuming, the amount of maintenance window we have, the amount of metrics events, dashboards, and so on, alerting profiles. All of these are also a specific metric, so we can make extra dashboards for it or uh, query um, yeah through the data explorer again if you want to have a further look at them. Um, I have often displayed all of the metrics inside this display. There are some more that we can view under the metrics viewer or directly under, under the data explorer. And yeah, let's see what we have here. So at the moment, I'm actually only breaking this threshold for the auto tax. So I have more than 1% of the auto tax consumed uh, that I should be, mm -hmm. and more than 1% of, of the dashboards. Mm -hmm. And this would be the problem that gets generated um, together with this other problem that we will have a look in just a second, um, we are seeing both of these problems under merge under the same because the uh, custom device uh, group, these both are using are actually the same custom device group. So this is why Davis is actually correctly correlating these two problems as um, in, in the same in the same one. Mm -hmm. Here is again. This is the group yep. that where these extensions belong to. I have called them my extension group, but this is something that uh, you can freely choose however you like um, the group to be called. Mm -hmm. And yeah, all of the problems that are generated by any of these custom devices will actually be grouped together under the same one. Really nice. So just uh, if you do me one more favor, if you quickly go back to the problem ticket you just had open, just to recap if I understood this correctly. Uh, what this really means is that um, I know you've set a very low threshold of 1%. So you basically said, I want to be alerted if I have more than 1% of auto tags of dashboards to my soft limits. So your soft limit for dashboards is, for instance, 2000. And in mm -hmm. our case, we said, if there's more than 1%, there will be more than 20, then I want to get alerted. Uh, as I said, the 1% is just a demo uh, threshold. You will probably choose maybe 60, 70%. But the cool thing about this is if you are opening up Dynatrace to a lot of teams, you want to make sure that Dynatrace is configured properly, not that somebody makes, let's say, too many management zones, too many dashboards, too many tagging rules. And this is a great self-monitoring extension to say, we are, are we within what we expect the Dynatrace configuration to look like? It's really powerful, really, really cool use cases. And I'm really surprised and, and happy that you show us these use cases that what's possible with extensions. Yeah. Happy to show you, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so everybody can get these extensions and uh, play around and do their own self-monitoring for any kind of environment. Mm -hmm. So let's jump into the next extension then. Mm -hmm. um, here we have the one that uh, we just show a second ago, this one will, um, actually there were some kinds of requirements uh, for this extension. So we can generate personal access tokens, we can generate API tokens, so these new access tokens. And we had some, these requirements. So all of the tokens must have a maximum validity of 365 days. So there is a year 
and tokens that were not used. So we have like a last time used uh, inside the API, a field that tells us uh, when this token was last used from any, any user, I mean, depending on the user. Um, this also uh, will mean that the token gets uh, deleted. Uh, first of all, it gets a warning inside the threshold and then it will get automatically deleted. And also if a token is about to expire, so we have like this uh, fixed threshold of 365 days and we can set uh, how long before we want to get an alert. Um, we will get uh, uh, an alert that a specific token is about to expire and eventually we'll be also able to automatically create a new token for the specific user with the same scopes. And yeah, this is basically just a token rotation. Um, again, this token extension will check periodically for any kind of these uh, constraints and generate an alert, uh, generate new tokens and alert the owners, notify the owners if any of these is about to expire or any of these conditions is met. So let's jump right into the demo again. I will go through these settings real quick for this extension. Here we have the choke and token validity extension. And again, uh, this uh, extension is, is, is built in the same fashion as the other ones. It will need to know which tenant it's uh, talking to and will need a token that has uh, access to the tokens. So it will need a token management permission, it will need tokens read, token write permission, and it will check uh, specifically for those constraints we set up in, in the extension. Again, this extension um, is maybe not meant to run every minute, uh, would make sense to also have it maybe once a day, once a week, mm -hmm. once a month, um, depending on your thresholds, depending on your use case. Um, and this is the threshold that I've set out the box to 14. Uh, this is just 14 days before the token uh, expires. Uh, we will see an alert, we'll see a notification. Um, we can then maybe set, depending on the token ID or the token owner, that the extension automatically sends an email to that owner saying, uh, be careful, your token is about to expire if you're using it, and then make sure to get in touch with us or uh, generate a new one even. And yeah, this extension will also make sure that if a user creates a token that has no expiry date to alert the owner and uh, remove the token for them basically. So this is not allowed uh, from from the client so nobody can create a token without an expiry date mm -hmm. and it will just automatically delete the token so all tokens are forced to be uh, only active or only have an expiry date of one year mm -hmm. um, let's have a look first of all at the custom device maybe so this is the check tokens custom device and yeah this doesn't really have much besides this uh these events that are coming in. So I have created beforehand before this session actually a token that is expiring uh, next Saturday. Mm -hmm. And it will tell us here that this is an error event. It will tell us that the token, this is just an ID, will expire in the next four days. Mm -hmm. It will tell us the expiry date, exp uh, uh, yeah, exactly when it's expiring and how many days are left. A little bit of metadata I brought in there. But this is basically just an error event that will result in a problem inside Dynatrace and a problem would look like this. And uh, you have here some more metadata about uh, what's going on exactly. Um, we could add, for example, the owner uh, under the hood, uh, it would mm -hmm. send an email out or uh, use a specific notification for this uh, that we have set up previously in order to alert um, yeah, the team that is responsible to create or rotate the tokens. And yeah, this is what, what it would look like uh, uh, as a problem in Dynatrace. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just, every, every demo that you show just blows my mind of how cool the extension framework is because you can not only use it for, I think some of the things we intended did initially, pulling metrics from external systems in, but really use it as a job executor, right? You're on a scheduled basis, you're doing things and then you can validate whatever you want because you have Python available. So for mm -hmm. those folks that are interested again in learning more about the extensions in general, there's more material 
on the YouTube channel or on Dynatrace University or in the doc on what type of options you have to build extensions in Dynatrace. The one that you chose is using Python and uh, which means Dynatrace basically executes your Python logic on a scheduled basis. And then you can really, come on, you can do whatever you want, right? And then you have full access to Dynatrace API and you can send back alerts, metrics. I mean, you've done a great job with these use cases. Mm -hmm. oh. We we I will show you just uh, one more extension about uh, metrics that is also really cool. cool. So uh, sky is the limit. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's Python. It's super flexible. It runs almost everywhere. It can get any kind of API information, any kind of data, push it back to Dynatrace. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as long as you have a little bit of programming experience and a little bit of time to play around, I mean, this is really fun to see how mm -hmm. things happen here so fast also and and. And so cool, you can tweak everything and however you like. And yeah, sky's the limit. Uh, you can play around and, and mm -hmm. see for yourself what happens. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let me get back to um yeah, I believe we have two more, two more extensions I want to show you. So this one. Um, it's also more specific, a little bit uh, more like a temporary, like short to midterm extension that um, could be interesting. So what this does is uh, it basically um, creates a heartbeat or a kind of a status uh, metric for custom devices. And uh, maybe that are used for infrastructure monitoring that uh, we are not able to install the extension for it that just yet uh, for some other kind of devices, mainframe systems that we want to monitor temporarily until we have the full deployment of mainframe for it and the full monitoring for it. And what this does is basically the, our custom devices are designed uh, that they either get some kind of metric and they uh, stay there and, and are there for us. Uh, but if you want to have a custom device that only gets events, for example, and just lets you get a notification of a problem that is ongoing in your infrastructure and this specific um, device of the infrastructure cannot be monitored by a one agent or by a normal mean, so to say, we can create a mirror system for it, like a mirror custom device inside Dynatrace and have, a, for example, a separate script that is uh, run on that machine or on a parallel machine that has access to this machine and can say, okay, this is actually having a problem. Please send uh, this event to Dynatrace via the API and onto this custom device that is actually should be mirroring this, this system in the infrastructure. And this is one of the use cases and what this uh, uh, extension does is basically just sends a heartbeat and says, okay, uh, stay there custom device. You are re really not receiving any kind of, of special metric. Um, you just stay there and, and exist for us uh, in order to get events and notify us when something goes wrong. Um, otherwise custom devices uh, are bound to, to disappear after 72 hours and this extension will just make sure to refresh the device and make it be there and so that it does basically not uh, disappear. Um, this extension will not refresh any specific custom device. So we need to tag them uh, with a specific tag. And this extension will pull off the custom devices with that specific tag and basically only refresh those uh, that, are, that are tagged uh, this way. So we are not uh, refreshing or sending any kind of, of, of metric to, for example, extension custom devices or other kind of custom devices we don't want to, to touch at the moment and only refresh those uh, that are basically infrastructure components we want to, we want to keep there. Uh, yeah, this extension works in a similar fashion again as the other couple of ones. So I will show you, first of all, the configuration site for this extension. This would be the Keep Alive extension. Um, again, it will need the endpoint name and the trace token. So this, in this case, it will need to write a time series to the custom devices. And uh, it will run, um, in this case, every minute, which may or may not be necessary. Again, these custom devices, um, well, they, they start disappearing after 72 hours. So that means they lose the properties and the text. So 
uh, maybe it would be sensible to have this run maybe every two hours or every six hours, something like that, in order to keep your custom devices. Again, you can have the custom device with some properties. And yeah, we will just see the extension real quick. This is not as fancy as the other ones. And this would be the Keep Alive extension that has one custom device at the moment. So it is uh, making sure that this custom device basically stays alive. Uh, we will have to look at the custom device, how the, the heartbeat looks like. But as you can see, we are actually monitoring or making sure that one custom device stays online. And this would be just the extension with the management, uh, with the um, custom device counter. And then we have here under the custom devices, we have this demo device that is actually getting this heartbeat metric. And this is uh, the tech I was talking about. So this is actually a hard coded tech. It can have any value. Uh, the value doesn't really, doesn't really matter that much. And yeah, it will make sure that the device stays here. It doesn't disappear. It's always there since it's getting refreshed, basically getting this metric, this heartbeat metric. And it will always be at the top of our page, regardless of what time frame mm -hmm. uh, we choose. Uh, we will always be seeing it and it will be always be there for us to catch the events and notify us in case something goes wrong with this infrastructure device, basically. Mm -hmm. Really cool. So just to recap, if I understand this correctly, also for people that are not aware, Dynatrace obviously has a lot of um, monitored entities that we see through our agent. So like a host, a process service. However, you can also have custom devices like we've seen many today already. Custom devices are typically used to push data from external components into Dynatrace, like a router, a switch, IoT, whatever you have, right? There's different things I've, I've seen people in, in, I think in the last uh, clinic where we talked about extensions, uh, Stefan Rado, he was uh, using uh, taxis and taxi fleets as an example. So you can really model anything. The point is any monitored entity, like also custom devices, they will kind of fade out uh, if there's no data coming in for a certain time. So your extension basically makes sure to send a heartbeat event, basically logging in a little piece of data on custom devices that we don't want to go away, just maybe for the reason of, hey, these might be offline for a long, long time and therefore not sending data, mm -hmm. but still we want Dynatrace to just show them all the time. And that's a really not a good use case. It's it's really, really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. These are just devices that are maybe are there for years without any problem, but then yeah. uh, suddenly something arises, something goes wrong, power outage, anything can be, and this device is no longer, or this system is no longer online. And we will get the notification, we will get the event, and yeah, we will have to do something to repair the system. So yeah, this is basically the use case for this one. So yeah, as I said, this is actually a short one. Um, the next one, this is a little bit more of a um, playground sandboxy extension where you can do a lot of things. Um, I tried to keep it uh, a yeah, so that the user can do more things. Uh, they can send metrics with it. They can check for commands. They can execute um, arbitrary commands, almost arbitrary. Not anything is possible, but you can do quite a lot of stuff with this extension that is really cool. Uh, this extension, I have designed it in a way that you basically pass it down uh, kind of a YAML-like configuration uh, for each command you want to execute. And if this command, for example, ends in a signal number, so in a digit, uh, you can actually pass this command a specific key and some dimensions. And this command will then be pushed as a metric point into Dynatrace. Um, so in this case, uh, this extension was actually uh, created because we do not monitor uh, each idle state of the CPU cores uh, individually. And you can get that with, for example, this tool, this uh, MP set tool uh, under an Ubuntu machine in this case, for a Red Hat machine, for example, could uh, vary a little bit, um, would depend on what you have installed, which modules you have installed. And yeah, if the command fails, uh, it does not, uh, the, for example, the return code does not uh, match with the return code you defined in your extension, you will see that you get a problem, you get a notification, 
uh, because the specific command you tried to run did not run correctly, ended up in an exception maybe, or just the return code was unexpected. Um, one thing to note, all of the previous extensions were ActiveGate extensions. So they run on the ActiveGate a remote plugin module. And this is actually a one agent extension. So this will run on any host that has a one agent on it. Um, you can run these commands, they will get executed. And depending on the status of the return, you will get a, an error, for example. Um, I've used this extension to check for uh, file systems, to check for partitions, to check the sizes of, of this. Maybe, if, yeah, if you want to do it through the extension, you can check if, if specific directory is there, um, if a specific file is there, and to send yeah some type of metrics, for example, like this um, idle time of the CPU cores of the individual yeah, CPU cores. Mm -hmm. It's very flexible. So really any any comment that you want to execute in the context of the one agent, and then you just say, send me the output of that as a metric back to Anatrace. That's really, mm -hmm. really nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And these extensions, uh, as I said, lets you configure um, many hosts at the same time as well. So you can have uh, from many hosts this extension running. Um, with the extensions 2.0 framework, we will be able to deploy this extension way faster and um, across the whole infrastructure in just a matter of clicks. Uh, in this case, we are still using the extension uh, framework 1.0. And this is what the configuration would look like for this ex specific extension. We again have, um, have this uh, debug level, how often we want to log or how much, how the verbosity we want to log in this case. And this extension will actually be running every minute. Um, this uh, did make sense when we were discussing how often this will be running. Um, again, we could of course change this to maybe also run maybe every every hour. So have like a cron string again. Um, yeah, this would be a matter to discuss when, when or why. Uh, we would like to, to run this extension. And yeah, I have here a little bit more of commands that uh, we just saw. So actually uh, CPU can have many cores. In this case, I am just curing the, the status or the idle time for the first two CPU cores, so the zero and the one. Um, this is the actual command that will be running on the machine. And basically it will fetch the fifth and sixth line of this command. This is like a table for which um, we are getting uh, the results of the CPU cores and inside the 47th column, so to say, uh, we have the actual data. And in the row fifth, we find the one for the core zero. And on the sixth row, we find the information for the first core. Um, this data is then sent to Dynatrace as a normal metric. So we can go into the data explorer, write, for example, idle time, and we will see here, this is our custom generic metric cpu.idle. This is a dimension key we can uh, play around with or define uh, however we want. And we can also send the specific um, dimensions if you have any. So we can send one or many. This is just uh, this one-liner metric in just, we can play around, we can have multiple dimensions as well, depending on the result of the of the command. And this is the actual uh, merged values of the idle time of the course. And we can split them by core ID, run the query again. And we can see here we actually the two times and uh, the idle time for this it's not not much happening in this on this box at the moment so the idle time is, yeah basically almost the same mm -hmm. so we have here for the zero and for the first one uh mark just a clarification question this is a one agent extension which means when you're sending the events back you are booking it on the host that the one agent is running on um, this ex these metrics are uh, just sent without uh, without a specific um, entity in mind. So th mm -hmm. this this would be. Um, oh, let me. I think it it then just goes to the host itself. Yeah, yeah, it runs yeah, they go, yeah, yeah. They mm -hmm. they go to the host itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you will you will just yeah be able to query by the host of course yeah. Yeah. 
And then the other command that was in there, it was the, to check for a specific file that does not exist on this system. And this is the one that we see here. We are seeing that this uh, extension is trying to execute a command and that is not going to work because we are checking for, yeah, well, I'm going now into the, into the system. Uh, we are checking for this specific file some non-existent file. Um, this is just the test for a specific file. If it does exist, it will return zero. If it does not, it will return one. And this is just saying, okay, you're trying to check for this file that does not exist. Um, and yeah, you're getting an alert for this. And this is yeah very flexible. You could run any kind of command, like for example, for a partition size or for a partition uh, itself and check the status of it and check the return code. And if it doesn't match with what you have passed down to the extension as a configuration parameter, then you will get a problem for it. I can only repeat myself. It's phenomenal what extensions can do. And I think you truly showed the art of the possible, what people can do with extensions. All of the extensions that you've shown today, as a reminder, reach out. If you are a Dynatrace user, an existing user, reach out to your Dynatrace team. Um, we, they can get you in touch with our uh, consultants. Um, these extensions are, I, I assume, not on the hub or publicly listed, but these are extensions that you can get to the services team. Um, just so oh, great way again to show what's possible and, and especially the, the whole, I like the operator idea, is Dynatrace configured correctly, otherwise you're regenerating things based on metadata, alerting in case you're misconfiguring Dynatrace, you have too many dashboards, too many auto tags, then uh, the heartbeat for custom devices, great stuff. And then also this here now with um, sending, capturing additional data from the host where the one agent is installed, and just automatically getting metrics like CPU and checking for files. Very impressed. Yeah, so yeah, these extensions are uh, for any anyone that is interested in, uh, just reach out to your services uh, team contact or CSM. And yeah, we will be happily providing you these extensions so that you can play around and see for yourself the yeah, the capabilities of, of extensions and yeah, basically Python being able to do a lot of things for you. Mm -hmm. Do me a favor, Mark. Just uh, I know that there's a last slide with, uh, with your name again on it. Uh, just let's make sure the people, uh, maybe let's end with with this one, if I'm not mistaken. Just on the very end, exactly. Um, Perfect. Or maybe the first one. Just go back to the yeah, first this, slide. Yeah. That would be great. Um, because this allows me to say again, thank you, Mark. Thanks for doing this. And folks, you know, be reminded that Dynatrace is not just a solution where you're locked in with what you get out of the box, but you can extend that box. And the way we do it in Dynatrace is through extensions that can run either as Mark's shown on the active gate or even on the one agent. If you want to learn more about extensions, do me a favor, look at some of the other observability clinics we recently did. There was a session around extensions 2.0, the power of it, uh, having a colleague who did a great demo, Stefan Rado, uh, on uh, using extensions to pull in external data, but you've seen today what's possible. Mark, I want to have you back because I'm pretty sure you have more of these up your sleeve somewhere <laughs> <laughs> and it would be great. Yeah, it's great to have yeah. you back. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. And yeah, for sure, we'll be back sometime. <laughs> Perfect. Then, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.